Welcome back to Gears Arena, presented by Underdog Fantasy. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Whoa. Whoa. I didn't yell, Gil. I didn't yell this time. I respected your earlobes. <laughs> back with the living legend, Gilbert Arenas. We got Brandon Jennings with us. We got Rashad McCants from Full House. Let's go. Cool. And remember, if you want to get down with Underdog Fantasy, go ahead, download the app, use promo code Gills Arena, and they will match your first deposit up to $100. We're going to talk Go Bear in a second, but he definitely tricked off my five piece. Oh, he did? Yeah. I need Damn. that double double. He came through with like seven or fifteen. Who, the yogurt who bets man. on Goldberg. <laughs> Goldberg. Oh, Goldberg. 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 But get me the yogurt out, man. It's fantasy good. We don't bet. Okay. You know I mean, we, you, we you pick them. Who picks? Pick we pick them. Who picks? Pick but let's start the show off on a lighter note. Uh, I know, obviously, Paul Pierce, LA guy. We're all fans of his. But he dropped a tweet yesterday and posed an interesting question: If a girl asks a guy on a date and make the reservation and invite her girlfriend, and you are the only guy, does the guy have to pay even if he got a lot of money, or how that work, when he really wanted to stay home and postmate it? I feel like the guy in this particular situation, name might start with a P, and his last name might start with a P as well, but if a girl asks you on a date and bring a friend, are you paying for everybody? Okay, so she asked me on a date. She asked you on a date. And she planned it? I think she made the reservation. And she brought her friend? And then her friend showed up. You're tricking. You're tricking. I'm just be honest. I'm just be honest. <laughs> you go man. smoke Listen. it, I don't smoke it out. Um, I have a rule. You bring a friend and I'm paying for the friend, I get the friend too. Let's go. All right, that's action. Let's go. All right? All right? That's just... <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> and I'm just saying, that's, that's just uh -huh. Uh -huh. rule. You pay it. Yeah. Listen, if yeah. you don't want me to try to talk to your friend, you pay for your friend. Thank you very much. So if she, open, if she open invitation. <laughs> if I got to write my open invitation. <laughs> what if you don't Thank know you that until the check comes and then they're just looking at you? Cool. So are, are you starting off hollering? Hey, 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 how you doing? Hey, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> see you later. When this drink money going to kick in? <laughs> when this drink money going to kick in? Oh, and the thing shit. is, does the bread part of it really matter, right? Like, if, if I invite somebody on a date, it's expected I'm going to pay. If she made the date, she made the reservation, friend shows up. <laughs> but for me, too, it's like, what's the friend ordering? Is she ordering outside of her means? Is she getting food she normally gets? Yeah. Or is she looking at the menu like, oh, I'm going to do the steak and lobster today, when that's not really mm. what she, she normally does. Lobster. Joe, you sound like you, you're experienced nah, in this. You done, nah. you done dealt with I'm, this before. I'm a square. I'm, I'm married, <laughs> but, you know. In my younger heyday, you know what's going on. I've I've been through it a lot. I ain't even gonna lie. I, I know you. You, yeah, I, <laughs> you, I, I, you yeah. married so, man. How about you? It's called you know what they call it. Uh, the uh, the groupies how they chase for the, the food, the foodies, foodies. The foodies. foodies. Yeah, and uh, it's it's literally <laughs> man. It's you gotta be careful, man, because they they just going for what they. They really ain't tasted this type of steak before. They want yeah. to go to this restaurant. They want to bring their friend. Like you'll say, it's rules and regulations to, to these, these, these decisions you I mean, make. I'm a gentleman, so I'm just paying. I know, I mean, like, 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 I, I'm just giving a bar so yeah. she knows. Like, okay, well, you know. Are you going to be offended at all if she starts over ordering? Like, she orders appetizers and doesn't even eat the appetizers and expects you to pay for that? You don't not, even look at No, nah, I'm, I'm not even thinking about it because I'm thinking like Gil. But what, are you order the wings and she eats too many wings? Like six wings okay, come out, first, she's eating four. Okay, nah. first of all, we're, 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 you know, you raise okay, 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 so, yeah, like, so we're yeah. not really looking and you know, like it's principles though. Like I've been, I've, there's plenty of times where you know you you're, you're with someone and then someone's inviting someone and you just like paying for yeah. the whole meal. Like yeah, like yeah, there's been bills where it started off as two and ended up as ten. And they just talking up. about five hundred thousand dollar bill, and you're just like. But if right, it's two on one, it. though, we <laughs> excited. I'm, we excited in the I'm, moment. I'm, 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 just, like, I'm just talking in my 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 new form. <laughs> <laughs> my new form is shit. You know, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 we excited. You, right? Listen, you setting yourself up. Thank you. Yeah. Set, listen, yeah. as a woman, as a woman, you're setting yourself up because you're bringing your friend around your baller. Come on now. Uh -huh. But Around your baller and he sees she order whatever you want. Yeah. You know, they go, uh -huh. you go gentleman, yeah. order whatever you want. Yeah. She gonna go in the back door. Hey, you know, you thank you for dinner. Thank you for dinner. You know, I appreciate it. You Don't know. let her be fine too. But, but the what friend, what if the friend fine. looked like Freddie Jackson and the girl just bringing a friend to improve Come on, how she then, look? Then then you you tell your you tell your girl, hey, you gonna have to do extra to make. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna have to do extra. You're gonna have to pay for your friend other ways. 
Okay. Oh, other ways. <laughs> that, and we'll leave it at that because we're a family-friendly show. Appreciate you, Underdog Fantasy. All right, let's talk about some basketball stuff now. We got Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant made his return last night. We dropped like 16. Wasn't, wasn't the best, but he, he missed like 10 games. Suns mm-hmm. got the win. That's all that matters. But interesting interview came out today he did with Shams in The Athletic where he essentially said he doesn't care about his legacy. So I'll read y'all the quote. I don't care about legacy. I used to. I used to want to carve out a lane or space in this game for myself that people can remember, but it's come too much of a thing now. It just becomes too much of a focus on other people, what he's done, what he's done, comparisons. Before when we wasn't doing all this debating, I cared about it. I'm about to be in the same breath as these top guys. It was big. Nowadays, I truly, truly don't care. I truly just want to go out there and produce, be the best I could be, go home, hang with my family. That's it. So, Gil, I'll start with you. Do you believe that KD doesn't care about legacy? I, 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 like, like I said, I think he cared, just like everyone cares about their legacy when they first come in, right? That's, that's what we, yeah. we, we have this idea that we've been inbreded with of, you know, your legacy. But, you know, as we've aged, we realize what, the, what, is, what is legacy, right? You know, everyone's legacy has been questioned. Yeah. Every great has their legacy has been questioned. There's there's no ironed legacy. Yeah. So you know we, we're we're sitting around here you know talking about you know oh stay with the same team this that 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 when in reality no one's gonna care at the end of the day because for the most part no one really knows the history like that like how many teams did Jay West play for. How many finals? How many championships? No, no one knows. We know he's on a logo. Yeah. Shit, I mean, if you tell a kid, hey, who's on the logo and it's not Michael Jordan, they're not going to know the person's legacy of that, that, um, that logo. Not getting bread for it either, which is I, no royalties. I feel like KD has allowed the outside noise to affect the tradition of what we all as players respect, which is each other's opinions, mm-hmm. right? So for him to say that, it's like you've allowed the – the fans and the analysts to dictate what your legacy can be when we already cement you as top dog, like you one of the top dogs. Keep going in the direction of knowing that we appreciate everything you do. Like it's not about what they think and all the criteria they try to push you to meet. It's like, bro, you done, you've been the guy since you've been the guy, bro. Like it's not too much more shit you need to prove to us. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like we know what you can do. We may criticize you here and there just because we expect more out of you, but that's just because of the bar you set for yourself mm-hmm. and, you, and we set for you. So now we look at it, it's like, hey, you ain't got to prove, man. Let these motherfuckers get you all riled up. Like, no. you got to come out and break your neck to do something. Mm-hmm. You that guy. And that goes for everybody else that has accomplished something. We talked about Draymond yesterday. Mm-hmm. Dray, you still that motherfucker, nigga. You still that guy, mm-hmm. right? It ain't nothing, you ain't got to prove nothing to me or anybody else. You, when you accomplish a certain level of success, man, you ain't got to go out here and prove to people you do this, do that. Even me, I ain't got to prove nothing to y'all. I'm going to leave. <laughs> Shit, I done I did mean, what I, I did. I talk to y'all yeah. all the time about it because I done play in the league. All y'all did, y'all earned a substantial amount of money doing it. I see some of the comments. We got a lot of great fans who love and support. But some of the comments like, oh, Gil, how many MVPs has Gil got or whatever? And it's like, huh? I mean, at a point in your career, you're one of the top 10 players in the league, top five players in the league. So what the fuck is somebody who can't even make a left-hand layup be able to tell you about that? Brandon, what what you think? I think KD's uh, legacy, it's good. I mean, it's great. I mean, he's he's done everything that an NBA player would want to do, win a championship, win MVP, been to the finals. Um, and everywhere he goes, he becomes the guy anyway. Mm-hmm. So it's not like, you know, you're going to a situation where you don't become the top dog, number one. Um, I think, I, I think, well, does KD need to win another ring? So that's a, another question. How much does his legacy really change or move with another ring, with another two rings? I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean, he's already, he, he, he's already who he is. So it's not like, you know, it's not like, you know, if he does it again, he just does it again. Like, mm-hmm. we know who KD is. He's, he's one of, like you said, the, one of the top dogs, one of the top five players, to, you know, in this generation forever. Yep. Um, so I think he's done enough. Like, he just needs to just, you know, just end it well. Just, just end it well. That, that's all I would say, just end it well. It's, it's the, the, real, the real question, I think, is where is he going to rank when it's all said and done, right? Mm-hmm. 
is four, five, six, seven championships going to put him in front of Michael Jordan, right? Yeah. If the answer is no, <laughs> if he wins 10 more yeah. championships, are, are we going to put him in front of Michael Jordan or LeBron? The answer is going to be no. I'm not saying he wins seven because he wins 10 more, I think. You win seven, then they're going to say, well, how many scoring times is he? They're going to find. They're going to throw, to find they're gonna throw <laughs> something in there. If he yeah, wins yeah. seven or with the first two don't count, yeah. they got him with Steph. Like, Steph. Yeah, so you're going to, well, you trade. So if the answer is no, then if the highest he can get is two or three best ever, then no, him having another championship really don't mm-hmm. matter because it's not going to do anything for his his. His mark, his legacy is his legacy. So you're saying, oh, you know, if LeBron wins five more, they're not going to put him in front of Jordan for the Jordan fans. So him winning five more or not, if they're going to put him number two, he's going to still be number two, period. Yeah. 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 So I think the thing with KD especially, leaving OKC to go to the Warriors after they had that 73-9 and nine season, lost the championship to LeBron and the Cavs, we all remember. Uh, people talk about loyalty all the time. But when, when teams do what's best for them, it's not a big deal. That loyalty ain't an issue, right? But when players do what's best for them, they get criticized. So is this a KD issue or more of an issue with player empowerment? It's the system. They want you to pay back the system. Mm-hmm. When you start thinking of your own and when you start wanting to have your own ideas and you want to do things your way and you know what's going on, it's a threat. Because now they can't have those, 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 those conversations that they would want to have with you, I mean, with, with, with you know, your management or whoever, mm-hmm. now they got to have it direct to you. So now the conversation changes. Yeah. Now the whole demeanor changes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I agree with that. I mean, that's, this is something you got to deal with, you know, when the upper management got to deal with direct. The direct approach changes the dynamic of engagement, dialogue, and understanding and culture. You got to be able to talk my language. Mm-hmm. Right? And I think that's important for us. If we want to get yeah. deals we want, yeah. talk my language. And that go back to Gil when he said his standard with his contract, like, I want this sweep, yep. I want this term. Mm-hmm. Like, kids, go back and watch that episode because it's important for you to understand you set the bar for what you want. Yep. You set your own reality, especially if you take control of that. You give them control, you playing and they, they, they game. Yeah. They get to move the piece where they want it because it benefit them. Yeah. But when they start to direct, direct. Same thing they're doing to Lamar Jackson yeah. Yeah. right now. Because like, yeah. it's that direct. It's like, no, I want my deal to be like this. It's a, th- it's a, it's a threat. Yeah. And don't be black. Yeah. Oh, no, man. It's, it's, it's the, the, the team don't have a face. Mm. Right? The organization, it's a name. Right? Fans are loyal to the name, not the player. Mm-hmm. Right? If you're a Laker fan, you're a fan of all of the Lakers that come through, mm-hmm. right? You might have your favorite Lakers of all time, but for the most part, you are a Laker fan. Yeah. So for you, it's the, that's the identity. This person comes and goes. We don't need you. We are the Lakers, right? right. That's how fans' <laughs> views are. So when a player decides to go against the fans' view, that's where the pushback comes in. If the team decides that, hey, we want to get, we want to get rid of you, we're like, yeah, yeah, we don't. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't <laughs> they, they who, who else we gonna get? Yeah. You know, so you know, <laughs> <laughs> who else is up? Who else yeah. in line? You know, and that's re- that's really how it is. The the, the the Lakers name is generations. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Our kids, our kids, 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 kids yeah. might have a chance to play for the Lakers. Yeah. Right. We are gonna be forgotten about. Yeah. We're afterthoughts. But all the Boston players, those are afterthoughts to those fans. It's who is here now. Yeah. So every, we're, we're just. <laughs> you talk about fan and team loyalty, but I look at myself in particular. I'm a LeBron fan. I don't give a fuck about the Cavs. Mm-hmm. When he was with Cleveland, I'm rolling with the uh-huh. Cavs because that's the team he's on. Uh-huh. He goes to Miami, I'm rolling with the Heat mm-hmm. because that's the team he's on. Same thing back to Cleveland, even coming to the Lakers. Because I saw it. I saw it with my pops dealing with Donald Sterling with the Clippers. Like, how the fuck am I supposed to be a fan of this team? When I got the owner of this team calling my house, making threats, threatening lawsuits, talking crazy and grimy to my pops, and I saw the effect that had on him. So y'all see it as well. To your point, like when they're negotiating these deals, it's the Nets, right? They don't they don't look at Joe side. Maybe he's the owner, but we're worried about the team. So mm-hmm. KD said he want to leave the team. We take that person. We don't know what's going on internally. 
but also too, just talking about this, this kind of ring chasing situation. And it's like people working their everyday jobs, you're gonna work at a, a whack ass company because they were the first company to give you a job. I gotta stay here for the rest of my life. You had a retirement yeah. party. They don't, mm, that's, <clears throat> but, but that's how they think from a fan perspective. Yeah. Oh, well this team drafted you, you yeah. gotta stay here yeah. for yeah. the rest yeah. of yeah. 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 It's always, when it comes to sports, we think a certain way. When you try to reverse it into our everyday life, hell no. Hell no. Hell no. No, no, no employee out there would take a pay cut for another employee in that office. Come on now. Hell no. <laughs> that makes no sense. Why did no? Yeah, you you're supposed to give me fifty dollars an hour and now you're talking about twenty-five, so I can give you twenty-five. I don't even like this motherfucker like that. That's what they would be thinking at right. work. But we can make the company better. But, yeah, yeah, cool. We can make me more money at the top. Like, and, come on, man. But no, nobody, when you switch it to their regular life, they're not playing by the same rules. That's what makes it the biggest joke of all. Yep. So do you have a problem with guys like KD, guys like LeBron who are able to force their way out of situations? Force. Like, <sighs> KD's with the Nets. Trade deadline coming up. I don't want to be here anymore. Send me to the That's sun. not for forces. I'm not going to play. I'm going to sit here until you. That's technically well, a force. I, okay. I could put Ask the pressure him a question. On. Yeah, put the pressure on. Yeah, he puts <laughs> the pressure on. Yeah, it's kind of almost forced, but kind of not. Like, well, he's under contract. Because they got to make a decision. Yeah. He's but making them make a decision. Man, I mean, if the, if the teams are allowed to do it and they, uh, they're allowed to openly shop you, yeah. Right, they're allowed to openly shop you. Then you should be able to openly request trades and see what your value is. Isn't that the yes. point? Lamar Jack, they're doing it. Lamar Jackson, right? Yeah. They're saying, "Hey, go out to see your value." That's G. But they're also so, colluding with Lamar because other owners with boo boo quarterbacks are basically saying, "Well, we don't see it with this former MVP." No, who's that's a, no, 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 a no, franchise no, changer. No, no. That, it's more. So, okay, so in, in NBA terms, right, he's technically a restricted free agent, Yep. right? Mm -hmm. um, but they're saying, hey, we want him back. We want him back. I want him back. I want him back. So now you're sitting here like, then why am I going to bid for him? Why am I bidding for him if you're going to, if you're going to match my offer? Right. right. right? It's, just, it's just pointless to me. I'm just helping set the tone. So you're like... And that's all it is, is the, the other owners is like, why am I going to try to lock my money up? Because I got to, okay, $200 million, I got to write this check. And then you got five days, now I got to write five days, and now he wants it. Like, it kind of puts them in a bad situation. It doesn't, though, Gil. It's a buddy system, if you really think about it. If one team says, go out there and see how much he'll, he's willing to take at this mm -hmm. offer, we got to match whatever that offer is, right? So if you can collude with another couple teams to say, hey, man, look, we don't want to we don't want to move them, but we don't want to pay them. Mm -hmm. Y'all go ahead and lowball them. Remember how they used to lowball players mm -hmm. when you get into your contract year? They don't showcase you so other teams can bid for you at the highest bidder. Yeah. Right. So they make you not play, not play. You can't see if he's really talented enough or or uh, uh, injury proof enough, durable enough to play. So now they just lowball you. Give you the lowest offer, ah, ah, yeah. ah. Other team come in, match it. Now we got you at a discount price. You would, you would think that, but it's owners. They're businessmen. Yeah. They, I don't give a fuck. But about they you. collude. You know they I collude. Know. They collude with each other. Unless they're friends, they don't get along. Yeah. I'm trying to beat you. I don't give a fuck what they, you. Yeah, if yeah, I can, yeah, listen. Yeah, you yeah, want me to yeah, lowball your yeah. your player? All right, I'll, I'll lowball. What, what, what you? You we, want it for one fifty? Hey, listen, I'm going to give you 151, right? What you going to give, give me you, back? I'm going to give you another 50 under the table. <laughs> but, yeah. Right? I don't care. I don't, but see, the problem with this is, is this. If he was unrestricted, like football should be like this. Because you can franchise a player and do all that. Like, I don't know the logistics of it. But it should be, it should be more of an open market. If the Ravens or he goes and opens the market and they say, all right, we'll give you 175, right? Yeah. And then you say, oh, 175, I'll give you 180. He should be allowed to pick right. where yep. he's going, yep. right? Like, you had the first offer. Yep. You didn't want to offer me. He offered me 175. I'm saying, fuck it, I'm going with him. I don't care about your offer anymore. Exactly. See, if he was allowed to do that, I don't think there would be this bullshit. Because now, if I get the 175 and you're allowed to match it, I'm forced to go back with you. Yeah, that's, that's And now up. I don't even fuck with yeah. you no more. Yeah, so and you just match it. That's what I was yeah. just talking you about. Just match it. You just get to match it. Like, yep. I'd rather just say, all right. 
I got the offer from you. What's your offer? All right, cool. I'm going to just go ahead. Fuck it. Yeah, now you got to come back and offer me and then I'm... <laughs> To your point, it's like restricted free agency to an extent. Mm-hmm. Like you think about DeAndre Aiden in the situation with the Suns. Suns yeah. basically played him. He went and got the offer sheet from the Pacers. Suns were able to match. Difference in the NFL with Lamar's case is that he gets a higher offer sheet somewhere else, and he ends up going there. They got to give give up two first round picks too, because of the way that franchise tag works. So that's where like another layer of it comes. So now I got to so, give him the bread, and I got to give up two first round picks. So that's even so more like, of a reason to yeah. collude. With that's that. why my point. Yeah, yeah. It ain't even colluded. It's just a, it's a fucked up system. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. It is. Yeah. Well, they have to. They have to operate that way. Yeah. Like, in order but, to get shit done, they gotta operate like no, that. No, what I'm saying is, it's like, all right, I want you, but I don't want to give up two first rounds because I got to think about my future. So, yep. like, I don't mind paying you to two thirty. But then I lose two potential first rounders. Yeah, on top of that. So it's, it's, right, it's, it's kind of like, like, how do I supposed to build with you then? You got to believe in me. To build. You got to believe that I'm worth those two picks. Then I got to, I got to, I got to, no, no, no. You, you're worth the two picks, right? Plus the 230. Plus the 230. But is my team good enough to win without two first round picks in the future? That's the point. That's yes. hard. That's the risk that you got to take with that. Yeah, yep. yeah that's All right, tough. good luck. Last like thing that. we'll say on this, this KD topic, I know y'all saw the Barkley stuff earlier in the week, but during a recent interview on 60 Minutes, Barkley had this to say about KD. He's very sensitive, great player. He's part of that generation who think they can't be criticized. He's never looked in the mirror and said, man, is that a fair criticism? So KD saw that, uh, responded with a quote tweet that said, this ain't getting tiring, Chuck. I'll never respect the words that come out of your mouth, fam. Just deal with it. So I want to ask y'all, now that y'all are on this other side now, y'all are former players, but now technically media. We're not square media. We're a little bit different. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh, what do y'all think about Barkley's comments and just the KD Barkley beef in general? Yeah. It, it, it's, it's no accountability from the older players on who they were when they played. Yes. Were they sensitive right. when they played? When they were sensitive yes. when they Barkley played. Barkley threw somebody through a, a window. No, no, no that's not a no. role model Barkley. Yeah, I mean, you, we're trying to talk about the guy, like, remember he went to Houston, right? And then he was throwing players under the bus, talking about they were out of shape and doing all like, trying to ring Chase. And he was one of the reasons that they didn't win. There was no accountability there. He was sensitive to all that stuff. Like, you was a sensitive player. You didn't like criticism. Right, so you you should know exactly how he's feeling for you not to come at him like that. Yeah. That's the weird thing, and that's why players don't respect because players we can fucking Google everything you've done, right? We have Google now, right? So I can Google Charles Barkley comments, and and then I can sit there and say, wait, you you say you're doing the same thing I did. Why are you coming at me like, like you all high and mighty? And that's mm-hmm. that becomes a problem with between players and the ex. I mean, I think they're just. I mean. I think every time Charles brings it up, you know, he's just, just playing into their game. You know, it's just always going to be friction or, mm-hmm. um, the, you know, KD's playing for the Phoenix Suns, so it's like, you know, he's on the team that you're cheering for mm-hmm. and you're still criticizing them. So it's just like, I mean, and, and at the end of the day, like, we see way more than what they did, mm-hmm. like, in comments and stuff. They, they would do a comment, it would be in the paper, and that'd be it. That'd like, be they, it. they're not hearing nothing about yeah. it. Mm-hmm. KD, get after a game, it's a million comments on anything that he's doing. So he's, he knows, like, he hears it. Like, he knows yeah. that, you know, he hears the noise. Trust me, he can't run away from it. So he's it's socially kinda, active, too. You yeah, know? socially active. So it's like, he sees, he sees it. So he gets it. Like, so I get it from KD. It's like, I get it. Like, I get it. So. But he trolling. Like, Chuck just trolling him. That's, I feel You're like it's him? never really personal. I feel like Chuck, no, as a media, he got to do something to get under these guys' skin yeah. just to provoke a response, right? Let's say KD not giving the response, Chuck like. Just like when DeMarcus Cousins was in the league, he was going at DeMarcus. he go at DeAndre. he go at all the bigs that didn't feel like he, they, that he felt like didn't play hard, like he played. Mm-hmm. It's all a reflection thing with Chuck, right? So for him to keep going at KD, it's, he's trying to poke the best out of him, just like how Shaq be doing with certain bigs. Like, I'm just trying to, you see he went out there and played, right? Chuck, Chuck do the same shit. I think, I think just with Durant, he's tired of it being so personal. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because as, as players, we know what's personal and what's not. We can feel like, that was a personal jab right there, Chuck. I don't like nothing you saying. And mm-hmm. Every time you say something about me, I feel personal. Like, when I see you, I got to say something to you. better basketball player than you. So why are you talking about me? You yeah. saying KD should say that to Chuck? I, I mean, it's just I, that's that's what's like. Look, look what I've accomplished. Like, and, and so it's like to KD is like, 
dude, what do you, like, what else do you want me to do exactly. in this game? Like, what else do, do I need to do? Yeah. I've won two rings, MVP, all that. Like, I've done everything. When Barkley's defense, he didn't bring it. He was asked a question. He responded to it. So I think from a media standpoint, like you're saying, they also know, oh, it's going to get clicks. We got Chuck sitting down on his chair. Let's ask him about KD. Yep. Whatever we put up. It's going to bait KD yeah, out it's of go, it's the gonna, He's going to wake up. You know I, think, I think sometimes, you know, as, as players, when we're dealing with the media, when we're playing, we're too humble. Yeah, 100%. Okay. I, 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 okay. I, we're just too okay. humble. 100%. Right? We, it's like we, okay. we have more respect for them than they have of us. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and I think sometimes when we realize that, like, you just said it. I don't know why KD hasn't said it. First of all, dude, I'm better than you. Yeah. Right, I was mm-hmm. better than you fucking seven years ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, when I left, when I left to go play for Golden State, I was better than you already. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Yes. <laughs> so what are we talk? Why are you talking about me like 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 I'm one of these other players? I better my career is better than yours. Yeah. You lucky the seventy five ain't ranked, so you can see that I will be in front of you already. Mm. That right there, that a humble, that a humble motherfucker right there. Yeah, yeah. He can stutter and shit. Uh, 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 <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> and, you know, Shaq could be in that motherfucker giggling and swiggling. Can he too? Shit, all the but, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, like Chuck, like Shaq. Now it's entertainment. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes you know, sometimes we hear stuff when we don't want to. Yeah. Right, like, you know, I don't I don't like Stephen A. Smith, you know, I don't like these guys when I played. Now I'm on the other side, I can see the humor. Yeah. Yeah. The humor in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, it's yeah. like, all right, you know, I know y'all have a job to do. I get it. You know, like make it about the job and try to stay out of the personal part of it. Okay. Right. Talk about my game. But is it is it our job too as entertainers, right? To not take it personal? To, to equal the balance mm-hmm. of it being entertaining, right? So if you know Chuck is trolling and he's trying to be entertaining, let me buy into that a little bit and be entertaining back. Because KD does it mm-hmm. with some people. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, that's, he, that's what he does. You know, the he'll respond in a way where it's like funny and it's like I'll hit you with a... But when it's personal, it's like when you respond personal, that's when it becomes personal. It's like, yo, I hear you, Chuck. I hear you. But I ain't paying no attention to you. But when you start getting like, hey, man, I never respect nothing to come out of your mm-hmm. mouth. That's when it's like, don't come over here and shake my hand yeah. at the wedding. I don't want to see you. Yeah, I'm I mean, good. Like, I, just say, I, I just say sometimes we just have to understand that court play is different than off the court. Mm-hmm. You know, um, conversations, right? You know, when you talk about, oh, KD sensitive. That's his personal Mm-hmm. You should be talking about his game, like yeah. What, what, yeah. you know, how do he do yeah. tonight? Sixteen yeah. points. Did you like, like, stick to that point? Don't talk about you know the attitude and all that stuff. That's yeah. when it becomes all right, right. Mm-hmm. And you got to be careful you troll. You yeah, know, you end up like Chris Rock. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I got time today. I got time. <laughs> <laughs> time today. All right, well let's let's keep this thing moving and shaking. Now we got to talk about the Sacramento Kings. Kings ended a sixteen season playoff drought. It was the longest of any major American sports. Now the Jets are in the lead 12 seasons since they've been out. They might get Aaron Rodgers. It might change. We'll see. But let's light the beam. We don't got the beam. So can they get a little a little smoke? A little smoke for the Kings. <laughs> Making these playoffs. Congrats. Smoke on time today. Let's smoke on time today. So last time the Kings made the playoffs was 2006. We was rocking 5X Pro Club religiously. Some of y'all had the sidekicks and the next tails with the key by the three. When you Whoa, church you or each other. what? 2006. You, wow. Now you, but you're explaining shit from 2003. Yeah, pro kids. I had the pro kids in 2003. We weren't rocking. No, you weren't rocking. Next tails and all that. That's 2002 and one. Good. Sock it, with, baby. Hi, with, with hypnotic. Yeah, don't you want to get in his head? Hypnotic and in his you was in the high school. You was in the high school. I was a freshman. That's with the G unit on. You was rolling. You was with the next thing. You was fabulous and all that. Yes. I got a kid by the three. We went to church shorty, church back. That was 2006. Next time. We had the next ones before that. 
but it finally made its way into rap music and mainstream. So everybody had them GMCs with the uh, with the rims and the beat in the back. And we gonna oh, get them, the two tens, the two yeah, yeah. The two tens, <laughs> dip set, dip set, yeah. Boom, that was that. Boom, boom, boom. And for those of y'all who don't remember, 2006, it's hard out here for a pimp. Won the Oscar for best song. So salute to that. Oh. They were singing that shit at the Oscars. Terrence Howard. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. Three six. Pimping. Three six. Memphis has been pimping. <laughs> but uh, so the Kings have been balling. Keegan Murray set the rookie record for three pointers. So bonus De'Aaron Fox, both all stars. And Fox is having probably his best season of his career. Mm-hmm. So I need to ask you guys, you three astute NBA, knowledgeable human beings, has De'Aaron Fox earned a spot on an all NBA team? Yeah, this year, yeah. This year? Th- yeah. 13? Yeah, 13. Yeah. At least? Yeah, 13. You, you at least. Third? Yeah. I'm giving him third just off, just yeah. quick, just quick response, third without thinking. Yeah. Like uh, third. Third. Without thinking? Yeah, third. Meaning he's deserving of yeah. just yes. being like, a Like, I'm yes. just all right, like, yeah. you know. So if we cipher through it, he could be move second up. second team, he could, yes. Okay, I like, yeah. I love, that's how it yeah. should be, period. Right. If you're not first team, you get to throw him in the box yeah, just, and say, <laughs> we'll figure out where we put you because yeah. you make sense yes. Yes. on this team, that team. Because a lot of times we just throw motherfuckers in there and you'd be like, oh, well, he got to be here because, yeah, you know, this yeah. is third team criteria, this yeah, is second yeah, yeah. team criteria. It's like, no, nah, man, everybody yeah. kind of, because Fox and, Sh- and, and SGA, to me, are they like, both balling. They balling. They both yeah. balling. But then but statistically, you no, gotta, no. What's so funny is when you say third team, and then you say, all right, who's who's first team? It makes you sit there like, all right, mm-hmm. uh, who's having a good year yeah, plus exactly. balling? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. And that's and then when you realize, shit, he can make second team. Man. He been really balling, right? Yeah. Are you looking at his Drew last Holiday twenty five games, team. man? And I'm saying like, now, like, Drew, Drew Holiday, Holiday Shay can, can make third team. Come on, man! Like, when you look at the the last 10, 20 games, thirty games, you like, man, he really been balling. This guy only been balling the last seven. Wait, who would be first team guards right now? Western or I mean, that is I mean, Luca for all. So point all, guard, yeah. Um, I mean, I mean, that you gotta is put right? Steph. You gotta I, put Steph in there. Do you? Wait. I mean, mean, wait, hold on. I mean, wait. (laughs) You see what I'm saying? Like, wait a minute. Hold on. Put Dame in there. The first. You got to put Dame in there. Your record. record got to be. Is it first first team NBA? Everything is. Criteria. It's record plus your play. So let's put the rules down on what the criteria is. You got Steph. You got Donovan Mitchell. You got Luka. You got De'Aaron Fox. As a point guard? SGA. I'm saying guard spots. In the guard spots. He fuck around might be first team. On Drew Holiday. Drew, Drew just had a 50 last night, all-star. But Dame, but, bro. But, the, Dame, the, but you got to be winning, though, right? Is it? Is it yeah. winning? You got to be winning? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So they knocked yeah. Dame out of the first team? Dame, Dame got shut down for the season, but I think he hit that 58 game mark, which makes him eligible for an all-NBA team. Yeah, but yeah, but I'm going by winning. I mean, that is a good question. Because his only competition... Wait, hold on. Hold on, man. Yeah. It's, yeah, no, no, everything. no, because... Ja, you remember when Ja, they was like, oh, Ja won't make a team. And yep. he was like, wait, how? He's only missed eight games. Yep. Mm. So he's now eligible again, right? So he's eligible. I think, I think it doesn't matter for games played for all NBA. I think scoring title, that's that 58 Okay, game so game. it's a lot of guards, bro. And how much, how, 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 just, wait, wait, what is the Andre Fox earning? I mean, what is he averaging? Uh, De'Aaron is averaging like 25. Let me pull it up. Mm. I should have had it ready. Yeah, That's on, on the big fella. Mm. He might fuck around. Second. Second. Second Because of the winning? Second team. High if king. we talking winning, 25, four, six. Yeah. 25, four, and six. So that means two guards. You're going to put what? Steph? I'll give Drew 13. If Steph we and who? roll with okay. winning and put Drew Steph in and there. who is in first team? Steph Luca. I mean, Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell. What is Donovan averaging? Donovan Mitchell. Donovan. You got to put Luca in there, bro. Luca's a monster. Luca, yeah, Luca he got, might go to Luca's second. He might go to second team. He really? For his record. How? That record. That record. record. Stats. And it's Luca though. It's, it's Luca. Yeah, and it's for affection. It's the man. I, man the 28, gotta, 20, 268 percent. I, I, I think top five. You got. You gonna give Donovan over Donovan Luca? Donovan Mitchell's averaging about twenty eight, about five assists, four rebounds. So he's gonna be first team yeah. guard. He's yeah, the first team guard. That's first guard. team numbers. Yeah, that's first. He team averages twenty eight. Yeah, I like that. He, he been Dang, I'm Fox, just, man. I'm hey, just Fox, not, Fox might be. I'm not Fox getting a lot from Donovan. Fox might be like, second team. It might be Steph. Luka. It might be. It might be Steph and Donovan Mitchell at the, at first team. But you can see Steph sliding too. Because over Tatum, game, potentially because Donovan over Tatum. They have Tatum at three. Okay, he's small four. And then you have you got Jalen Brown too, who's in the mix. Yeah, like, a shooting guard. So then it might be Fox and Luca in second team. So who's the first team? Is Steph and who? Donovan? It's Donovan, yep. 
Then you drop Luka down if, if the Mavs don't make Se- the playoffs. Second team. I'm going with Steph. If I had to go no Donovan, I'm going with Dame. But y'all saying because of the winning. But we, first team. I recall first on a, team on an NBA episode days. we did, I think last week or the week before, y'all also said that it's more impressive for the stuff that Dame's doing because he doesn't have anybody else around him. He's basically got it. Yeah, but, you know. Yeah, you, but we've seen this for years. But you've seen he's, but you've seen he's out right now. And I don't think they're gonna give him a. Yeah, they can't uh, reward they're him. Gonna, they're not gonna give him a team for throwing the towel. Yeah. Ooh, that's gonna be interesting how they Damn vote this one. Damn, like that. Like, because if he saying. doesn't make second team, we still gonna be like, damn, damn, right? Yeah. Even though we automatically yeah. gave him third team, but I think he might deserve second, second. team. I can see Drew making t- third team. I can see him making third for sure. You rocking a buck shirt though, so yeah. we gotta we gotta preface it with that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Or, you know, I'm going to collab. I mean, you know, it's family. It's family. You know, I'm dropping a collab. You know, dropping a collab this weekend in Milwaukee. I'm paying for tickets, too, though. So, yeah, get Drew that all in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No bugs. No bugs. Let's do it. All right, but let's talk about these Kings. If the playoffs started today, it would be Kings Warriors at the 3 6. Warriors have been absolutely trash on the road, and Kings have one of the best home court advantages in basketball, where I think we can agree it'll be turned up for those playoffs. Have been in the playoffs in 16 seasons, though. In any world, can the Kings beat the Warriors in a seven-game series? <sighs> yes. Yes. No way. And we, let's just pretend like Wiggins is not yes. coming back. It's I'm a, saying, I'd say it's a good series. I'm saying no because they're defending champs, and I gotta. I, I don't just think they beat the defending champs. It's, it's a great four matchup. Four times? It's a great matchup. No, for sure. It's going to be all It's going trades. seven. It's going seven. I'm thinking it's going seven. It's a perfect matchup. So you're going seven, bonus? seven with four games in Sacramento, but, but if the travel, too, is not an issue. No, no. I, it, listen, Cowbell, unless you played for Golden State to go to Kings, it's like Clippers playing the Lakers. And it's the Clipper court. If so you give the Clipper dr- curse to the Kings. The you'll, give it, you'll get drowned out by that. Like, you, you got, them Golden State it's fans coming. is going to flood it's that coming. arena. Yeah, it's, it's so coming. it's not a real home game. Like, the SAC, SAC is going to try to overtake, but you're talking about in the playoffs, usually it's, what, 95% your crowd? Yeah. And you got a trickle of uh, – mm-hmm. they're, playing, they're playing right there in SAC. It's going to be 75-25. Yeah. And because – Oakland don't like going to San Francisco. They gonna show up to they goddamn yeah, Sacktown. Yeah. So it's they gonna have at least twenty five to thirty percent of that crowd. And that's a lot. That's a and lot. The, but wait, but wait, that's a lot. But that's wait, a lot. But wait, Sacktown is back though. No. Sack, listen. No, They've no. been waiting to no, no, show no, no, no. up you, you're for right. a long time. So they're gonna show up to San Francisco too. No, and think no, of this. Not the matchup, it. the matchup we talking about today, right? Mm-hmm. Sack and Golden State is perfect. They reflect each other, bro. In and out from the from the point guard to Herder to Keegan. These are two shooters that match up, not with Clay and Steph, but just the ability to have two shooters that can shoot. Then you got Fox and Poole who match up as mm-hmm. slashers. Then you got Sabonis and Draymond. Then you got um, the uh, Harrison Barnes. And you know, you got you got a good matchup Harrison where it's Barnes like, revenge game. No, yeah. no, no, no. It, it, it sounds good. <laughs> If it's, all, it back if it's all neutral side, yep. but it yep. looks like this. On this side, it's 70-30. Yep. On this side, it's 100%. Yeah. That is not that, that is not Sack what fans you, can't pull up to Chase Sack. Center. And them tickets are Oh, it's Chase Center. It's, it's Chase. It's it's if, it was Oak, if it was Oak, I keep forgetting. It's not Oracle. <laughs> they over there. They over there. Yeah. They over there like this. Look, I forget. I forget. How you doing? How you doing? They only got E40 down there. But that's a but that's the thing. It's like you're playing against a team. It's like this is like Knicks playing Miami. Which right? Could In happen. Miami. That is not a Miami home crowd. That's a Knicks home crowd. Ah, so yeah. Knicks is favored in that series yeah. when it comes to the home advantage. Oh, you gotta deal. You, it's, it's, because they gotta show up this playoff time. No, what I'm saying is Miami is all retired. Oh, you talking about the old, the, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. all retired, Yeah, you know, Cubans, Puerto Ricans. <laughs> that's from New York City. So if you ever watch a game when New York plays Miami, it's they more out. cheering for it's New York. You're right. They're right? They're so, they're out. They're you know, that's, you know, that happens. I don't want to, I don't want to, like, if you're Clippers, you don't want to play Lakers. That's, you don't play Lakers in a Staples Center or it's Crypto. It's, it's you know, it's not a real home. You don't get the real home environment. Like, I watched the first game. They were booing. They were booing Kawhi Leonard, and it was the Clippers game. <laughs> like Clippers, he's at the free throw line getting booed as soon as the game started. Yeah, yeah. And it's Clippers. It's, it's 
Clippers. Yeah. And then they had to, like, after after the first quarter, when Clippers started coming back, then the Clipper fans started to overtake so the So they were getting punked up before that? They was getting punked So let me that. ask. So does it matter, home court advantage or not, between the Warriors and Kings, with the, rec- with the record the Warriors got now on the road, yeah, they got like seeing that they up. might have an advantage. Just say, mm-hmm. what you're saying is true. Do that still give them with the record on the road? Because yeah, yeah, we mean, talked about that. But, you was yeah. like, yo, they record so trash. Play- do we trust them? Playoffs, though. Playoffs. Play- 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 think, think about it. If you're going to, if you're going into, who is your rival in college? Uh, Duke. Duke. What if, what, if you can, what if you can get 30% <laughs> of your crowd inside there? At Duke? Yeah. Changes 30%? A, 30%. It changes a little bit. Yeah. Because as of right now, it's 100% Duke. Yeah. That's hard to win in. Give you a 30%. It's about 95% because we got a small body. Now if you sneak in, now you can can sneak in 30%, it kind of offsets But not really, though, because this is the thing. With Duke, and you talk about crowds, right, and arenas, it was a high school gym. It wasn't like the Smith Center. So it was small, compact. So even if we were to get 30%, 30%, that's... It still don't sway the fact that they it, got seventy in here strong. But, yeah. That's like ah. Yeah, but what, I mean, but but thirty percent but, but can still have you. Yeah, yeah when we yeah. score, it gives us a little. It gives you a little something versus yeah. zero. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, right. and that's, that's all You're I'm right. saying. It's You're like right. you, you. They will have the confidence, but it's not like a, a regular road team coming in there with no fan base. Right. Yeah. You know, but, it's kind of different because when we were start, see, they've never both been good together. They've never been both good. Both teams actually been good playing against each other. So 16 years, right, this fan base hasn't seen the playoffs. When they were the, the shit, Golden State wasn't. You're right. right. So they've yeah. never really had this battle. So this is going to be new territory. But when on the road has Golden State literally been zero fans, though? That's another no, when thing, I, when I played, When I played there and when I was with Golden State and we'll go to Sacktown, Sacktown was in power, and Golden State fans are still acting the nut. Right. <laughs> what I'm they talking about now? It didn't end well for them, <laughs> but they were still acting the nut on a losing. We were, we were sorry. I'm talking about now, though. Like, with Golden State, the team now, and their, their sorrows on the road, yeah. right? Every road game they play, they're not 70-30 in the crowd. The crowd yeah. is not a factor in that road skid. No, no, no. Well, but, I think they, right? still, they still got fans. In they the got a they lot of fans. fans they the got, city, yeah. Right? This is down the street. Down the street. This is right around the corner. This is this is busters. I think it's going to be the biggest matchup. These two are going to be the biggest matchup for sure. If these two get to play, that's going to be great TV. Yes, yes sir. So, so, for sure. 100%. So, so here's the for scenario sure. and the question for y'all. So the Kings right now are the three. I think they're two games out of the second spot. They got six games left. Two games out of second? Two games out of second. They mm-hmm. can knock the Grizzlies down. They had been, they had been flip-flopping for a little bit while Jaw was out. But if you're the Kings, do you try to now get that second spot? And now you're talking about having to play the seven seed of the play-in, which, as of right now, the 7-8 is Timberwolves Lakers. So it's potential that you can have them Lakers now coming into Sacramento for a series. Like, who would you rather play if you're the Kings, the Warriors or the Lakers? Warriors. Shit. Lakers. Damn, that's Lakers. tough. Lakers. That's so Lakers. tough. I don't want Lakers. Like, as much as Lakers. I throw it in and I heard you, I'm like, eh. Lakers. No Lakers, bro. The, the Lakers the get them out of Lakers there. Squad. Lakers win. Yeah, just... I mean, remember you're king. You've never been to 16. Right, but I don't want to start the playoffs against the defending champs. Ooh, you're right. You're, you're in shit show. Yeah, you're, that's what I'm saying. You're, but, ah. Uh, but you got the You don't want LeBron champ, in the first round. Potentially you without upset Andrew Wiggins, with AD, who's them healthy. player of that that's, team. That's, that's, Not it, a big it, it, no, it don't matter. You want to play it's, it's just go to, because it's the playoffs and the intensity get another level. Knowing like, to, what to we, me. Knowing what we know, playoffs look better when the Lakers is what? Moving. In it for sure. Yeah, you want to be the Kings it. playing against the Lakers. And you know, and LeBron. LeBron. And you know, was Lakers. Yeah, because yeah, because I mean, well, no, I got the Lakers winning that series. Yeah. Oh. So, so, so I'm saying I don't have the I don't have the Kings beating oh. beating the Warriors. So well, you don't saying, have, you I, don't. I, I want Sacramento to play the Lakers so the yeah. Lakers can beat them. Oh. <laughs> so you're not giving them a chance. You think you give them? So just so they can beat them. Let me get the niggas out of there. Kings, would you rather have the Lakers or the Warriors? Because both of them are going to be tough. But you say try to move a forward. You think they're losing either one of those series, but they they might have a better chance against the Lakers I mean, than the Warriors? Both, both is must-see TV because Bron's out there. and yeah. in the Golden, well, I think just Golden State would be more exciting. 
Like, yeah. like, like it'd be more, it'd be more back and forth. I, I think we're, I think this first round, to be honest, as fans, is going to be a blast. Um, because if Golden State plays Sacramento, that's going to be a war between that's that 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 that, that city, right? If Golden State plays Memphis, oh, we're going to have a dream mob. We're going to yes. have a shit show. For sure. Right? That's going to be a yeah. great shit show. NBA can't lose either way. And, and that's what I'm saying. So, like, as a fan, it's like, all right, which, which one we want? It's like, all right, how about this? Lakers, you go to SAC, right? Fuck it. Lakers go to SAC. And then we want to see, we want to see, we want to see Memphis and Draymond. We want to see that shit. So no, would you, yeah. would you, would you rather have that? Yeah. Lakers versus SAC and Golden State versus Memphis? Yeah. Because I like what you said with Lakers matching up with the Kings, right? <laughs> uh-huh. That's a, it's not a, I don't think it's a good matchup because LeBron, I think he run through them. Yeah. I think he He wants the them. Lakers to win though. Right. So then they're going to be matching up with the winner of Golden State Memphis, correct? Which is a great series. No, Either no way, who, whoever, no matter who wins, teams. right? Either way. So it, that to me is like, this all right, what's basketball. the matchup? This is great that. basketball. Great right basketball here. after yeah. that. Great basketball. And it's momentum for whoever team wins Memphis and, and Warriors. That's momentum. Because it's like how well you play in that series is going to give you momentum on LeBron and them, depending on how they sweep through that. If they sweep through that 5 1 or a 4 1, um, 4 2, whatever the case may be. They get there, they're like, all right, we ready to go. AD done warmed up, LeBron healthy. You know, what we got? Draymond and them like, yo, we need momentum yeah. to get to get to these guys, cause they they ready, they waiting for us. Yeah, I don't awesome. see that see that that sack that uh that Golden State versus Memphis though, that can be that could get a little tricky. I know that's that can, that could get a little tricky right there. Hey. How so though? How so though? Tell me how so. Because, because without now, without Andrew Wiggins in that series, it's gonna be tough. What makes it tough on Golden State? It's just it's, it's nothing different they see. It's just it's just it's just I don't like I don't want Draymond to play into that Dylan Brooks game. Okay. Like get caught up in that and then like lose a like like you know like lose a lose a game because of some silly stuff or or whatever like cuz they're going to get rowdy. Yes. So it's just like is is the Warriors mm-hmm. is the Warriors I guess like together enough to be able to get past them. Right. In, in this cuz they're you know they coming, man. I think I think the the Dylan Brooks will be a real big factor yeah. in that yeah. because the advantage he has is Memphis don't really need him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they don't really need him to be successful offensively right. in that series to win it. If he can actually fuck with Draymond to the point Draymond offensively trying to do what he does is off. Ooh. Yeah. I don't trust And, be, and because we don't know, we don't really know, like, we can't say who's actually better than who. Right. You know, they're like right, they're a few plays away from anyone can win this series. So yeah. I want to see that series. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's going to be mental. It's yeah, going to be a mental battle. It's going to be a mental series. Well, Have you noticed we never talk about, like, this is the first, we've never talked about Steph. In this mental thing, it was like we already know Steph gonna do Steph. Yeah, <laughs> Steph doing Steph. He think about nothing else. He's going, <laughs> like, oh, no yeah. one ever mentions Steph because it's like okay, okay the seven yeah, Steph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, pencil in that thirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. pencil yeah. in that thirty yeah. forty. Yeah. That, that yeah. one fuck around to get a fifty piece and, and whatever. But <laughs> that is crazy. Yeah. Any every other team that we talk about, we talk about the star like here and there. Mm-hmm. When it comes to the Warriors. Never yeah. question Steph okay. because Steph does what he know. does. We right. trying like, to figure out crazy. who That who is matches. crazy to the point where he is get. We guaranteed him. It's like uh-huh. FDA approved. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like when we talk about the Warriors, you like all right. We mentioned the other star without mentioning because yeah. that's his comparable. Yeah, yeah. Whoever the other star on the other team, yeah, you got to match yeah. up with yeah. Steph. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Steph. He's, he's winning that battle. Yeah. Okay, all right, yeah. we good with that. So we talked about these Lakers them being a threat. Now it's time for hibachi time. Ooh, ooh, ooh! ooh. <laughs> <laughs> hibachi. So we got to talk about Anthony Davis. Now, AD, eight game Sunday in the Lakers Bulls game. We were very critical of him earlier in the week. Mm. Lakers came back out to Chicago. He came to his hometown, mm. put on a show 38 and 10. It was his 16th game with 30 and 10 this season. So, question for all y'all 
We see, it seems like two different versions of AD. Mm -hmm. We see that version that can go out and look like he's one of the top three, top four bigs in the league. And then we see the other dude who looks like he's shying away from the moment, deferring to LeBron and not really wanting to put the team on his back. So is it fair to expect this version of AD for every game or at least every game for the rest of this season? There's this, um, you know, I know they don't do analytics on this, but there's a reason that there's superstars, right? There's all-stars, and then there's average players. Mm. The, 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 the levels is this. Mm. has nothing to do with our skill, right? Our skill is our skill. It's out of the 82 games, how many games can I play at a certain level, mm. right? Mm. Um, Talk about the, it. The, the, the top tiers, those elites out of 82 games, they're, they're going to try to come to play at least 76 of those. Mm -hmm. right? Even if they're not having a great game, they're figuring out how to win it, 76. Mm -hmm. Now, you're all stars, right? They're around 68. Those guys, you're like, ah, there's just something not. They're 41s, mm -hmm. right? And then, and then the flock, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about Anthony Davis and you're looking at 8, then 38, Right? Well, that's what we would expect from someone who underperformed, right? Your, your bounce back was great. Yep. But it's like when I'm evaluating him, I'm evaluating how many games, like if you're averaging 20, you know, 26, how many games 26 and above did you do for this season? How many games were in the teens? Mm -hmm. Like, so when we talk about like James Hart, I remember I was showing my son, like, look at the fucking consistency. Mm -hmm. His mind, like, I've never, like, when you look at Jordan, right, you look at a certain thing. But I think James Harden owns the most 30-pointers in a row or games in 20s and above. It was like 30 to 40 of them in a row. Like, you know how hard that is to sustain that type of concentration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was just like 30, 40, 45, 30, 35, mm -hmm. 40, 50, 50, 60, 60. Like, yeah. it was, and I'm just sitting there like, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But that's... That's where that that certain level. So when you're asking a question, it's like, so far, no, we have not seen it. So just to, to break that down, in the month of March. So you're out for a drink. Oh, look at us. We got the audio on the computer. Mm -hmm. That's my fuck up. In the month of March, starting from the, the beginning of the month to now, 38, 39, 30, then 8, 17, a 35, a 26, 15, 27, 37, 15 when LeBron came back, first game against the Bulls, and then 38, the second game against the Bulls. So, been He's, more, been more yeah. on the, the higher side of it, yeah, but that's, that was a yeah. lot without Brown yeah. playing, but though. There's a, there's a, there's a certain yeah. evaluation you got to give <clears throat> for certain guys in situations, right? Situational basketball goes a certain way when AD does have an eight-point game, right? Ten rebounds. It's like, what happened in that game? Was it a blowout? Was it one of the games where somebody else was hot? Was it one of the games where he sat back and he was more of a defensive presence? Mm -hmm. You know, you don't get a lot of stats that come through on the defense when you're anchoring, right? So he has to do his job on that side. It's one of them games where he might take off, right? Mm -hmm. But it still was a team win. He was a plus 12, plus 14, and it looked good. He didn't need to go out there and score 30. That was against the, the, the eight-point performance was against the Raptors. They won that game. So then you, you look at the 15 and 15 and the 17 and 17s and then erupt for 39 and 18. I look at certain consistency when it's based around the team morale, the team tradition and understanding that, look, I'm going to do what the team needs me to do while being consistent with my skill set. Right. So if AD can do that, which I don't think he's been able to tap into knowing that consistently on a routine basis, I'm going to give you these numbers, like you said, with James Harden. Mm -hmm. It becomes routine when you know the minutes, you know the touches, you know the plays. Like, I know I'm going to get mine. So routinely, if I do have an off game, it's not because I shot bad or it's because somebody played great defense. It's because, nah, somebody else was hot. Nah, we got some other things going. We ran a different play today. But I'm routinely going to be consistent because I know where my numbers are. Right. But has A.D. found that? Has he found that within the Lakers with LeBron James on the floor? We don't know. He should. I mean, they won the championship together. Come on, man. That bubble shit don't count, man. Bubble, 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 b
Bubble League guts. Hardest championship in NBA I mean, history. Yeah, because oh, everybody was sick, man. Sick of what? Get so out the Lakers weren't. The Lakers sickle weren't. cell. What do you mean sick? They was sick. <laughs> everybody in the Locked bubble. In Disney World. <laughs> Off in the shit. That shit don't count, man. How you not going to count that championship? Because you, you ain't good. Do, you ain't did it since. Thank you. So you ain't did it since. But how come no other team won the championship? <laughs> Thank you. How come no other team won the championship? The Warriors the won. What do you mean? In the bubble, I'm saying. Nah, because it so there's easy. only one bubble. We only played in one but bubble. But if it was so easy, why didn't every other team win the chip? Why did the team that stood through persevered had to linger? They had the healthiest. <laughs> they had the. They had the players with the best immune systems. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas was in there getting their immune system right. What's so funny is no one actually got sick in that bubble. No. That we heard of. That we know about. No, no player missed a game. The quarantine inside the, the quarantine. That we know of. <laughs> I'm just he could have been benched, huh? Yeah. I'm just... Oh, he's, no. he, his hamstring hurt. Okay. I'm telling you, Three man. to four days. Actually, that bubble, when you think about it, when you think about the people who are playing great in the bubble, that has to be the hardest championship. The reason is this. We know what practice players look like, right? Mm -hmm. Practice, they, they look yeah. like they <laughs> Michael Jordan, right? Yeah. Yeah. That game, when they get in that game and they got to see them lights and they got to see them fans booing and stuff, that's what tapers them off, yep. right? So in the bubble, all the practice players are them now. Yeah. <laughs> so now, technically in the bubble, there's more talent. Mm -hmm. You're going against more talent. Yeah, yeah, and then we've yeah. seen players that we've seen them in the bubble, they were great. We ain't seen them motherfuckers since. Yeah. We ain't heard their name since. Was a dude that play uh play for Brooklyn now? TJ uh, Warren. TJ Warren. Warren was, was whooping that, ass. Was that uh Indiana guy? Yep. Oh yeah. whooping ass. Yeah. 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 He was whooping yeah. and we ain't seen it yeah, since. But you're right, that's part that's a hey, that's 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 what happened. Those guys yeah. who never got to really play got to show the fuck out when they was in there. That bubble, like, yeah. shit, coughing no or not. Yeah. <laughs> no booze. Yeah. No yes. booze. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got my daughter. Hey, man, watch that. And do this <laughs> you get to see right on the jumbo truck. I ain't gotta, I ain't gotta look in the. I ain't gotta look in the crowd. Oh, baby, I get to see. Hey, daddy, about to cook. <laughs> watch on the zoom. <laughs> So let's talk about my favorite moment from that game. So we remember Sunday, Pat Bev hit the bucket on LeBron, hit him with the two small. Austin Reeves avenged the honor of his, his current GOAT, hit it on Pat Bev, gave him the two small. Damn. 50 million. Hey, look, I'm, 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 gonna, I'm just going to ask. This is more of a hood. This is more of a, uh, this is more of a <laughs> you culture. You let that run? That's what I'm saying. This is more of a culture thing as, as, as uh, a black man in this America. <laughs> How did we feel about that? He waited to no. do that. He knew he was going to do that all game. He's like, when no, I score, I don't on think Pat. Patrick Beverly seen it. Do do you do you supposed to get a take after that if you Patrick Beverly? Yes. 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 Right. Just because. Just because. Just because. I just, right. I was just, just wondering. Like, I know I did it against LeBron, and it's LeBron, right? right. And you just did it to me, and uh, <laughs> you of uh, the other. Culture. Come on. Hey, you know, I'm trying to figure out do Pray I. Pray that man. Pray that man. You Pray said that he man. can come to the backyard boogie. Yeah. Like, do I do, do you, you like foul? Do you like foul hey, him I'm, hard? Am, like, am I letting the ox score go? No. He, he, he don't get the ox score. Look, look, no. Austin no. is asking for a malt liquor at the barbecue. Well, he, let, but, me, let me get the I'm more liquor. No, as a black no. man. Let me get the old dudes. Let me get the, like, the old yeah, E back there. Saying. You got some old E. That's what Austin like, comes in. He got hit by with the. You get, this ain't Luca. He comfortable. This ain't Luca. This ain't. Y'all got no, some old E back there. You got hit with, like, ugh. Comfortable. With your own shit. Comfortable. Pay that man. He comfortable. Pay that man. <laughs> he comfortable. <laughs> Pay, pay that, that man. That's like rock, like he go to Westbrook, rock yeah. the baby. Yes. Oh, that just oh, hurts so. Yes. Oh, that hurts. Austin Lake, Reeves Lake comes Oh, to the you got to give him an elbow or something. Oh, like yes. something. Clippers, April 5th. If if he hits Westbrook, he got to, ooh. With what does he get if he baby? does it? If he gets that in the Lakers win. Russ not having that. Oh, Russ getting tech. Russ not having that. I'm just saying. You can't hit Russ with the no. Ring, no, ring they might need a statue. You rock the baby Russ on Russ. That, <laughs> if he, if he Russ rock the baby, that. he might no get a statue way. in front of Stables if he no Russ. He ain't rocking the Russ. Hey, no Russ getting a tech if he, he sees rock Austin no Reed. Yeah. Rock the baby. I already bro. know. But let's just talk about this Lakers squad. It seems like they're gelling. They're coming together. We got to see D'Lo, LeBron, AD all out there, and what this team could really be. Are the Lakers chemistry issues behind them? I mean, you know, chemistry issues is just is issues, right? You clean them up. You you um, you know, you play game by game. You know, everything is situational. Um, 
You know, you can be struggling right now, and then in playoffs it clicks, right? I, I think just uh, when we when we were playing, and it was a year we. It was our second. It was our second year. The year I got hurt, right? We we actually came to the Bucks, got smacked, right? Then we went to Ch- uh, Charlotte, got smacked, mm-hmm. and then we had Charlotte on the back to back, and then you know. My frustrations, and this is my frustrations. What ended up happening is we had a small, tight team, right? It was like we was only playing seven, eight. Everybody was hurt, right? Seven, eight. We was hot. We was playing well. What ended up happening is all our players started coming back, right? And coaches now trying to figure out how to, even, you know, put everybody inside of this. You know, now you, you know we were from seven to eight to like a ten-man rotation. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, we supposed to be getting ready for the fucking playoffs, man, and we still fucking with our lineups. Yep. Right, we're 10 games away from playoffs and we're still fucking with our lineups. And that's what I was saying, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. And wow. you know what I mean? It was just one of those things like, yo, like we're supposed to be getting ready for the playoffs. So, you know, chemistry right now really means nothing. It's like them last two games, it's everybody oiled up right. Yeah. Yep. Because yep, yep. when you get into that, when you get that book, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. I got a guard, Brent, Jen, uh-huh. okay, let me see. All right. Yeah. Like you, five, like, seven, five, like seven, you seven, sitting seven. there, like I don't give a shit what nobody do. If you elite and you trying to be successful in the playoff, you can't sleep that night because you reading pages like yeah. Man, he shoot ninety percent going to the to the left. All right, he shoot ninety going to the right. What you where you want me to push this man? Like you yeah, got you yeah. getting everything. So let me ask you this then. Okay, you must have never been in the playoffs. No, I haven't. <laughs> I knew it, right? That's I knew I'm you like, I'm asking the question. That's, what, asked, that's what I'm like. Yeah. That's what I'm like. Let me ask you a question then. <laughs> so when you talk about team chemistry, right? And you look at the Suns, right? Mm-hmm. And yesterday we talked a little bit about Aiden and how his numbers are gonna change when the dynamic is. So I was looking last night, like, all right, if the Suns are playing, get off the ball, right? Mm-hmm. Get off of it. Move it, drive it. KD comes in, KD, we know he's a, not necessarily a ball stopper, mm-hmm. but when he gets off the ball, it's with a team like Golden State where everybody can get off and shoot it and, and get there. So now it's like it gets to KD and it stops, mm-hmm. right? So KD is not just a sub. He's not just one of those guys you, you put into the situation to keep the ball popping mm-hmm. like any other sub, right? Does it change the chemistry as they're being able to get the ball off, get the ball off, and then all of a sudden it stops? Does that stop the chemistry? No, it's 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 different. It's just you know it's it's a different part of the game that everyone has to adjust to. Like you know in the playoffs, you know when you're going into the playoffs, every round, every game is situational, right? It's not like regular season is really out of one. I'm we're, we're playing my first year in the playoffs. We played the Bulls three times in regular season. I was averaging thirty three against the Bulls. Right? So you already know me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> about to kill them. <laughs> Kirk Heinrich, Duhon about to get All this night. work. All night. Struggling. 15? 15, two for 17. It was, yeah. it was rough. They was wall- Everything I was trying to do was walling it up. Yep. Mm-hmm. Scotty Pippen, thank you, thank you, 33. He made a comment. He said, if you think you're going to do what you did in regular season against them, y'all can't win this series. You're gonna have to defer. You, you, if you're trying to average 20, 30 something in this series, yeah. no, they, this is what the playoffs is. They're cutting you out. They're gonna make you pass to see if you're capable of passing. Yep. Yep. Now, if you're capable of getting the rest of your team involved, then you guys can win because they're, they are not planned for you to pass. They don't think you're gonna pass the ball to your teammates, mm. right? So what I did is those first two games, I'm looking at it. And I realized, oh, this is all load up. Yep, yep, yep. Even when I when I hit that, y'all know mm-hmm. the, the picture mm-hmm. I got, the game yep. winner? Yep. I was two for 15 at that point in time. Larry Hughes had 30-something. Wow. Man. Larry Hughes had that. I was struggling. You know, so it's, it's, it's series by series. Like, you know, like everyone going into the playoffs, like, you might not have an advantage in this round. You know, so don't don't sit there and, you know, I'm pouting and, you right, know. Right. Your round might be next round. Yeah. And that's why I don't think, you know, yeah. if I'm Lakers, man, you should have gave Dwight Howard better respect, 
right? He helped you during. He helped you during that, you know, the Denver series. Yeah, yep, like yep. he re- he really stepped up in the Denver, Denver series, and in the Miami series, y'all told the man you're not gonna play much. Yeah, and he's like, all right, cool. You know what I mean? One, like that same thing with Equal Dollar did mm-hmm. in the the um, Golden State yeah, game. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, we're gonna need you to come off the bench this series. All right, all okay, right. cool. All right, you've been a starter the whole damn year. I'm gonna need you to come off the bench this series. Right, so when a player does do that, because it's going to be needed in some rounds, you yep. you never know. Yeah. It changes. I like. I might have uh, this 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 series right here. I might have thirty four in this series. Mm-hmm. Next series might be fifteen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, mm-hmm. it might be fifteen, yeah. and you got to really understand that. So the chemistry changes. It changes. It just. But that's what we was talking about a little earlier. Just circumstantial situations for a good player to understand mm-hmm. when he needs to be assertive. And when he doesn't, and that playoff basketball is gonna be the different, the difference maker, mm-hmm. right? It's like, all right, like you said, first round, first two games, we cutting that shit off. Weak side basketball only. <sighs> Weak side basketball only. So what is your utility guys gonna do on the weak side? Or have they been prepping for this all season? That's why I look at good coaching. It's like, okay, what are your weak side guys doing when you're talking about the second unit, mm-hmm. right? If we shutting this shit off for Gilbert in the first, Steph in the first, it's the second unit guys that's going to make the difference. Mm-hmm. So then when I sub in with the second unit guys, because that's going to be coaching too, let me throw Gil in with the second unit guys, see what they do. Oh, that's going to change everything because the, the assignments change. We didn't work on Gil playing with the second unit. Mm-hmm. Now he, he done fucked the whole... The whole shit up. So now we got to be like, oh, well, we didn't work on this big doubling Gill at the top because this big is a drop big. Mm-hmm. This big is not a switch big. Now mm-hmm. Gill knows that. Mm-hmm. He sees who's in the game. Oh, yeah, flat feet. Lunch meat, turn in the corner. Now we got the weak side three, Karan over there, mm-hmm. Antoine over there. We got threes, and I got three over here with the end one. Bam, bam, bam. That's elite basketball. Yeah, that's real. Justin is the. <laughs> That's, I mean, you're game by game, man. That shit changes game by game, yep. play by play, um, quarter by quarter, right? It might be, you might, you know, we might be switching, right? Our whole game plan, switch. We're going to switch on you. Yep. And then you sitting here like, switch, bah, 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 bah. Yeah. Right, no switch. No switch. <laughs> no, <laughs> no switch. Yeah. That's how I was in my series against Atlanta my rookie year. Mm-hmm. They had seven different defenses for me. I remember just Al Horford, one, one, one quarter was Al Horford, the next one was Joe Johnson, mm-hmm. the next one, it was another switch with, with Josh Smith, mm-hmm. then they would bring Jeff Teague, and mm-hmm. it was like five <laughs> different defenses, and I had to figure it out well, as a good. rookie. And I mean, we went seven and lost, but I mean, just, just that whole series was just like, man, it was just crazy. And, that, and that's why I said, you know, when you're talking about elite, when you go in the playoffs, like, it's really, you're in the book, because yeah, now, you're you know, book. you're, because... As an offensive player, you have to be 10 steps of in front of the defense. Mm-hmm, yep. So you got to think about the concepts. And, here, and this is how it works, right? All right, if I come out the pick and roll, you know, hard show. If I start scoring in there, what are they going to do? Okay, they're going to possibly double. Mm-hmm. So I need to, if I hit three shots, I need to see if they're making a call. And then if that call, if I, can, if I catch that call and they have like two twists and I come off and they double, now I know I got a signal. Mm-hmm. So now when I'm going and I see two twists, I'm like, all right, slip it. Yes. Yeah. Slip. <laughs> Talk that right, shit. Boom. Talk that Next, shit. You know what I mean? So now in real time, you're reading because now you have pickups. Yeah. Now you really understand. And that's what I learned in the playoffs. I, when, when we didn't make the playoffs, I went to go watch Jay Kidd and him. Right? Mm-hmm. It was Jay Kidd went to the playoffs. We had the same system. And I'm just watching. And I'm just watching Kidd. Just, he's He's hearing plays and he's watching the coach. Yep. Not his coach, they coach. So he wants to see, he'll call a play drop, and then he wants to see what the other coach does. And then he'll be like, all right, uh, there'll be twists. So when he throws it down there, he gets to watch and see what's gonna happen. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and you just, and it's, you know, that's where, that's the. Let me least, add, man. before you go, before you go, that's the let least. me add, because the defensive side of that, I was able to be a part of the Miami Heat. I was a, like a, a media correspondent during the Heat Championship in 06, right? So I was able to go to their practice where they prep. And the defensive side of everything that you said Mm -hmm. with with how the point guard goes offensively, like, hmm, okay, so when I come off 
here. I got to deal with this. So the defensive side is that is like, look, we are guarding Gilbert this way, this way, and this way. And the nail guy's making him pass to that mm. guy. We're going half rotation back. We're making this, this middle guy take this shot. No mm. corner shot. Because this guy is not a driver. Run him off the three-point line. So we're sticking to the nail. We're forcing Gilbert to pass off. He ain't no going to the hole on no Euro step because we know he loves that. He gets mm -hmm. the foul there. Stop the ball. Make him swing, swing. Right? So defensively now, it's all rotations. Yep. It's all rotation. But think about this. What teams haven't been able to practice rotations if they were bad the whole season on rotations? Now you don't got the time to really prep for a guy like mm -hmm. Gilbert who's going to force you into full rotations, and you ain't practice it with the first or second unit now. Now you're at a disadvantage in the playoffs because, you know, we ain't got the experience. But, yeah, but that's why, um, that's why Doc looks so bad in the playoffs. Because he never adjusts. He never adjusts. Like, if, if he was successful two games in this system, and then they adjusted and figured out, and they won the next two games – he doesn't adjust. He doesn't want to make adjustments. He doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't adjust. He just sticks with the same flow. It worked. Like I, I here's a flaw I seen. He's playing against Houston Rockets, right? He's playing against Houston Rockets, and they were doing the like hacker. They were doing hacker Dwight and hacker uh, DeAndre Jordan, mm -hmm. right? So they're up three one. Clippers up three one. And was it Rudy? No, who, who wasn't Rudy T over there? No, who was over? What coach? With the Lakers? It? No, with Houston. Um, Adelman. Was that Adelman? Adelman. No. Then? Was, yeah. So he said, he was like, um, publicly, that we're just gonna, we're just gonna fack a, a, a foul uh, Jordan. We're gonna put Jordan on the line. Doc responded, well, then we're just gonna uh, hack Dwight, put Dwight on the line. <laughs> That's your response. Don't and I'm sitting here like, <laughs> like I, I understand the concept, but that's <laughs> stupid as shit. The reason is they're, they're fouling you knowing that you're going to foul them, but they have James Harden. Hmm. They have a one-on-one -on -one player who's going to take advantage of that fucking penalty. That bonus. You don't. Yes. So what, is, mm -hmm. what ends up mm -hmm. happening is, Soon as James Hart, so James Hart is not going to do anything but pass it to Dwight. Y'all going to foul him. Getting the penalty. Seven minutes and into the I penalty. The now he's sitting. And that's where, that's where all this came from. He was, the penalty started so, so early. He's like, oh, shit, I'm just about to play one-on-one -on -one yeah. basketball. And they win the game. Starts off the game again. Doc is doing it again. Oh, God. I was like, wait, you just did uh, not learn that he's yeah. doing it on purpose <laughs> yeah, yeah. so you can so get, you get James that. Harden in the penalty. James Harden doesn't take these hits. And that's exactly all four games, and they wonder why they lost. Because they have a one-on-one -on -one player who's going to take advantage of all the free throws. So he's baiting you to foul, and then as soon as they get in the penalty, take him out. Mm. Now, now guard James Harden in the penalty now, and mm -hmm. James Harden took advantage of that shit. All right, now let's bring in Underdogs Fantasy's Coley Mick, co-host of the True Wither Show and Cut To It with Steve Smith. Coley, welcome to the arena. And just so you know, you are the first to break the color barrier on this show. <laughs> you did it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I heard Jim's disappointment when he said, I bet it's a white man. <laughs> <laughs> but I told him you had swag, though. I told him you had swag. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. That it's always good to have a cosign, especially when you're coming in <laughs> and, and setting the tone for the entire nationality. <laughs> so, Carly, you're you're a big Celtics fan, so we got to talk about that Jalen Brown interview he did in the Ringer. Uh, do you see Jalen Brown in a Celtics uniform next season? Yeah, I do. I mean, I I I think it helps if it make if he makes All NBA because then we can pay him astronomically more than anyone else. Uh, and he's his own agent, so he's he's out there negotiating. He's he's been there since he, when, when he was a rookie. After his rookie season ended, thirteen out of fifteen of his teammates were immediately traded that summer. So it's not like Tatum, where it's he's he's had smooth sailing pretty much his whole career. He's seen some shit. So I I don't think he's opposed to leaving, but I think he's like, yeah, you gotta pay me. He's negotiating. So y'all going to put a Lamar Jackson on him and hit the other owners around the league and be like, nah, <laughs> don't let him dip. 
Stop it. No, no, no collusion over here. No one's gonna, no one would help us. No one likes us. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> yeah, no you're, one's gonna help. Oh, you're, he's leaving? Thank you. I got a question. Okay, as a, as a, as a Celtics fan, mm-hmm. do you guys actually, do you think you actually had a team that was good enough to actually win a championship with the talent that you had versus everyone else? This year or like just pe- for the last four right. years, you know, when, when people were giving you guys number one in the East and all this, d- did you really feel that you guys were that good? Or I what? personally didn't feel that way okay. until February last year. Mm. So for the last four mm. years, Black no. History Month. since last February, <laughs> yes. Since last, fe- okay, so last year's team, you really thought this was a good team? Yeah, I mean, from the bubble, Every team that went deep into the bubble the year after kind of fell to shit. Uh And then we led the league in COVID for two years. No one had more people on the COVID list than the Celtics. (laughs) We are ground zero for COVID. And so we just couldn't play. Like our starting five was never on the court together, really until last January. And that's when Rob started getting real starters minutes and the other four were just on the court. So I think once they actually started playing together, yeah, it clicked. Okay. So it's looking like the Celtics will probably get that two seed. So just looking at this, this play-in lineup, right now it's Heat Hawks in the 7-8. Which of the play-in teams would you want to see? I mean, I'm, I'm genuinely not too concerned about the play-in. Like, the Heat have Bam, and Jimmy hits a different level when he gets to the playoffs. Every year he truly doesn't really care about the regular season. Uh, so it would be more annoying to play them, and I respect <laughs> Spo. The rest of them, I, I really not too concerned. Y'all not worried about Trey coming through there with Quinn no. Snyder? No, not at no. them. Not in the slightest. I got a question. Not really, like they, the one year the Hawks had success in the playoffs was that post bubble season, which had like the Knicks getting playoff win. Like that wasn't a real season either. <laughs> <laughs> I got a question, yo. Um, so if you take Jalen Brown off this team. Do the Celtics make a playoff run next year? I mean, they just like, am I filling in for them? It's like, would no one steps into those minutes? <laughs> I mean, just... See, just think about like, you know, everyone's talking about Jalen not coming back, right? Mm-hmm. So who's going to fill that void if he goes into free agency, right? Goes in free agency, doesn't re up. They don't trade, you know, make a dynamic trade for him. What right. really happens with the Celtics without a Jalen Brown? Mm-hmm. It'd be tough. I mean, Tatum would have to hit that recruiting trail like heavily. Uh, I don't know if it's like his best friend, Brad Beal or what, but it's, it's no small shoes to fill because Jalen, it's not just that he's one of the most dynamic wings in the league. It's like when the team hits a lull, when they're just chucking threes and they're not connecting, he's the one who gets the ball and it's like, I'm going to the rim. I'm going to finish. I'm going to get fouled. We're going to play basketball. We're not just going to heave. So it's, it's, it's more than just replacing his 25 and his defense and all that. Like, you're replacing a lot. Um, so, yeah, I don't know that it's as simple as just swapping him out for someone else. I, I would be devastated to lose, truly okay. devastated if he went somewhere else. So then the real question is, is Jalen Brown suited better as a complimentary player to Tatum, or can he man his own ship? Mm. I don't think he... Can't man his own ship, but I think both of them together. I mean, these two since AAU days have been very close. I don't think they really care about that. When he says, like, I want to be valued, I want to be respected, I don't think he's saying, like, oh, I need to go be the one on the Pacers. You know what I mean? I think he's like, every last shot doesn't have to go to Tatum. Every overtime, I can touch the ball, too. I can also score. <laughs> so I think he's more saying, like, hey, draw some plays up for me, too. Like, every big shot, not every big shot, but most of the big shots, especially in the regular season the last couple of years, it's Jalen sending it to overtime. It's Jalen uh, driving. It's Jalen hitting a crazy three where he's falling out of bounds. Like, that's kind of what he does. I think he's saying, like, hey, I, I think it's harder to guard us if it's not just, oh, we're going to run this handoff to Tatum from the top of the key that we run every late game. <laughs> All right, last question I got for you. When you look at the Celtics fans, and, you know, Gil, you've been critical of them. Yeah. It's an interesting fan base. Do Celtics fans get a bad rap? Uh, no. No, I don't think they do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
it, like right. I'm from Boston. It kills me because Boston as a city is beautiful. It's super diverse. As a fan base, it does not come off that way in the slightest. I think it's well earned and <laughs> like, I'd love for it to be better. It's not something I'm like proud of, but yeah, it's it's pretty well earned. It's there's a reason you asked me that. If I came on here as a Rockets fan, that wouldn't even be a question. <laughs> If you were the Rockets fan, we have some, some other questions for you. <laughs> for sure. Yeah, for we, sure. we wouldn't be talking about the basketball. Hey, who, was, who was the fan, he used to sit behind the player's bench, and by the third quarter, he was, like, toasted, and they always had, like, to carry him out. That, like, it's a, you don't know? I don't know. I don't know that one. It's like, like, I, my, I my forgot. I don't, I don't remember that. He used no to idea. sit behind there, he used to just chug two beers, and by the third quarter, he's like, Done. <laughs> like that, that's most of the city. Like, oh. it's, it's, it's an alcoholic ass city. So it's, that's a lot of people you just described. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Well, Carly, we appreciate yeah, yeah. I, you. Oh, oh, I, got go ahead, I, I got one. I got one. Yo, so if you guys don't win it this year, right? Well, you guys mm -hmm. won't. Um, you, guys aren't beating the, you guys aren't beating the Bucks. But um, based on what? B based on talent and, and the Bucks being healthy. The Celtics are healthy. Yeah, you guys got lucky last time. year. The, you, the Bucs have beat the Celtics in the playoffs once in recent history under the Giannis era. Once. You, and that was the year Kyrie was like, get me out of here. And he was just chucking 25% mm, Other than that, you guys haven't beat us. Well, you guys got lucky because uh, oh, okay. Chris Middleton Chris Middleton got hurt, right, we last year. We took three starters out in multiple games last year. Uh, all right, so my question is, um, <laughs> <laughs> if, if you guys yeah. got, if you got, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. I love it. I love it. Um, so what happens? Uh, I think I asked on this broadcast. Um, if you guys don't get back to the finals this year or win it, um, like what's what's the next changes? Because it's been you you guys been at this run for a minute now. You know, with Tatum and and Jalen. So you know, like what's the next steps if you guys don't get over the hump this year? Yeah, I mean, I. I, I do want to pay some respect to the Bucks because I do think the fine. It's kind of like when Peyton and Brady were running the AFC. Like when they met in the AFC Championship, that was the Super Bowl. Yeah. Who, who's yeah. going to get to go roll the Bears by forty points yeah. next uh -huh. week? Like yeah. that. Yeah. That's what I see with Celtics Bucks this year. I don't. I don't think anyone from the West is Ooh, beating. Ooh, spicy. Okay, I love it. Eh? Mm. So, I love it. It's like yeah, if, if we like if we lose to the Sixers. Blow it up. Like, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that would be right, disgusting. Right. If we lose to the Bucs in seven, I tip my cap. Giannis is the best player in that series comfortably. I know he's the best player in the world. So if we lose to Giannis, yeah, I would hurt. I, it's yeah. not like something I want to happen, but I don't think you have to have any crazy overreactions. And I do think, like, I view Brogdon, and I love Malcolm Brogdon. I view him as a one year rental. He's been crazy healthy, healthier than he's been the past couple of years. Yeah. I think you can dangle that contract, cobble it together with something else and a ton of picks. Okay. And that's the move you make. Honestly, win or lose a championship, I think you do that. Okay. 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 Well, GM, you the GM. Let's go. <laughs> please, please, if you have strings that you can pull, get me in that building. All right. Well, Coley, we appreciate you pulling up to the show and breaking that color barrier. We're 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 the, underdog thank you, thank you, the underdog fantasy family. You gave him a, okay. You got some more smoke. You gave him a little poop. No, 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 it just, it just does that. That was a little poop. That was a poop. It, it just does that. It just, <laughs> all right, so now let's get into our last segment of the day. Mostly fans. Mm -hmm. All right, so White Man Can't Jump turned 31 this week, stood the test of time, has one of the most legendary scenes in cinema history. I'm going to go to my car, get my other gun, shoot everybody's ass. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the man who birthed me, shout him out. So I got to ask y'all, Gil, we'll start with you first, or you want to go last? I go last. Gil will go last. But well, Brandon, I'll start with you. What's the best basketball movie of all time? Best basketball movie of all time would have to be I'm going with Above the Rim. Okay. Mm. Okay. Rashad, what you got? You stole my shit, man. Damn. You stole my That's shit, good. man. <laughs> oh. So since he picked that, I'm not going to double up on it. I'm going to go He Got Game. Okay. I'm going to go He Got Jesus Souls Worth. <laughs> and just so we can name some, <laughs> some other movies so people could appreciate it, we got movies like Hoosiers, Brandon, you said Above the Rim, He Got Game, Blue Chip, Sunset Park, Hustle, which just came out recently. Three Ninjas, technically a basketball movie, great basketball. <laughs> Three Glory Road. And one that doesn't get enough love, I'm personally a slam dunk Ernest fan, but I'm a weirdo and I like weird shit. 
And also Thunderstruck KD, amazing acting performance. You, but, said, you ain't said, but no movies for me, huh? But I'm just telling you, New Jack City. G Money could have went to St. John's, decided to sell crack with his brother. <laughs> That's what fucked his jump. So you say no movies for you. That's what, but no, no Gil. No, I'm just saying. I'm just giving the list. I, now I'm asking you, Gil, what's your favorite basketball movie? There's only one basketball movie that I care for. I was there when it was filming it. Calvin Cambridge, baby. <laughs> like Mike. Like Mike, <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> like Mike, sirs! I was at the dunk contest when it was shooting that scene. Wow. Little Bow Wow, little, it was Little Bow Wow at the time. Before he Bow Wow. Yeah, he was there, yeah. like the dunk contest, Jason Richardson. That was, that was my, my, uh, our first year there. And you got a little actor coming in, it was Bow Wow, you know, growing up on Bow Wow, so I was all geeked up. Okay. okay. So how, how good can Like Mike B if it didn't have crazy. MJ's blessing? First huh? of all. First of all, it was like Mike. We didn't want to be Mike. It's like Mike. Mike. We didn't want to be Mike. 2002, Calvin Cambridge. Calvin. Take no L's. Yo, I was in a movie. I had a basketball scene. It's called Love, L-U-V, with Common and Megan Good. That was the Ooh. shit, bro. Yeah, yeah, I'm in a movie called Love, and uh, they were betting on me to get to the league, so I was out there dunking on these high school kids <laughs> in Baltimore. But yeah. Tyree, yeah. that's young Tyree. Yeah. Young Tyree was in that movie. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> young Tyree. Yeah, 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 you know, Bow was only five years younger than you. Well, he looked like he was five <laughs> when he did that. <laughs> I, know, I know he looked like he was five at that time. And last thing I'll leave y'all with, y'all both picked above the rim. So I know his name was Nutso, so I don't expect him to be rational. But is it worth sacrificing your life to tap on a janky backboard? If you you grew, seen the glass right there. First of all, if you grew up before, I don't know if they still do it now, but back then, tapping was the shit. Yeah. He didn't even get say, that high. Say, right? Yeah, was tapping big... was the, that's what we did. It's an issue. It, it was, was initiation. Yeah, it was. Yeah. But that was like seventh, eighth grade, sixth six, grade. No, back then. That's not like fifth, high school. Fifth, fifth sixth, seventh grade. Seventh grade. Fifth, but sixth, seventh grade. These dudes were high touching school. Touching backboard? Yeah. yeah. Just, yeah touching was, backboard was, was big, my yeah. son right now. That's the thing. Touching backboard. Levels. That was initiation. You was the man of the crew if you got the, the highest on what? the backboard. I, I, I respect the listen, tap game. Listen. A tap in game was like tap, a dunk. You get tapped in, like, right? Yes. You get tapped up. Ah, two hands. Two, two hands. hands. Yeah. Two hands. It was this and two fingers. Yeah. Ah. Gotcha. <laughs> that was bragging rights. Bro. People fought over getting tapped off. <laughs> man, you joke on that. You can't even tap glass, yeah. man. You, yeah. can't you can't even got tap. tapped on, dog. Uh, so, yeah, that death was, it just, it put the tap community like. I wonder, like, what the trajectory was of tapping after that point. Did it lose value? Were we all like, damn, I might tap this back for yeah, too it, hard? Yeah, it did because. At some point, we had to look at the film and say, why did he get a run and start? <laughs> why did he? Like, like, why, like, like, I mean, I, uh, why are you running the tap? Why are you running the tap? And like, that don't even really count. Yeah, well, it, it was unrealistic, too, though. Or it's just some New York shit, right? Most courts in LA is not on roofs. Yeah. 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 They got courts so. on roofs out there, but it's like chain link fence, something. Yeah, 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 I'm about to say, so, I don't know what court that was. I've never, yeah, yeah I've yeah, never yeah, seen a court, a, a court on the roof. roof. So I, I it tapping was the shit still. <laughs> there we go. Oh, he, didn't even get, he didn't even get above the rim. Bro, but that was an aggressive. The movie's called Above the Rim. That was an aggressive tap, though. But he didn't even get above the rim on the tap. It was so aggressive. This movie's so hard. He can't sleep at night, man. I mean, even though. Even though the championship game, he only made, Shepard only made six actual shots, three or six. They ran the same play? They said it ran? They no, ran no, the no. Same play. What about when bro passed to him? So no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, not what I'm saying, to run the same play. It's the same actual shot the whole scene, yeah. just from different angles, angles like yeah. coming off shot. It's the same, like, Bro, he, he, we, it's the same defense doing the same thing. We like, only got him for five minutes. That's that's it. It. We only got him for it. five minutes. That's, that's what it looked get like. The angles, get the angles. Get the angles ready. ready. That's, that's what, what it looked, he made that's, what it look, that's what it literally looked like. Look, it looked like they should have did that too. Like Jesus shut us worth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was the same thing. A white man can't jump. Uh, Wesley couldn't really hoop. So if you watch, his club, highlights is crazy. But though. it's a lot of. Below the leg, you don't really see. Like he might, he might throw up the layup, but they don't show what happens after that. They cut tight to the hoop, so. That is what it is. A little nugget for yeah, you guys. 30 and a half. Yeah, 30 and a half. 
play summer league. Tommy, Sh- <laughs> Tommy no, Shepard. I'm not Shepherd. playing summer league. Let's go. What the All fuck? right, but we appreciate y'all pulling up our last show of the week. Gills Arena presented by Underdog Fantasy. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. We'll be back next week. Thank y'all for tuning in. Be a